the fact that they're now delivering F-16s, of course, it will create a future NATO, no, sorry, Ukrainian uh, uh, air force that will be NATO interoperable. NATO planes, NATO pilots, NATO trained pilots, uh, and uh, and. Uh, this is my video update on this Tuesday midday, June the 18th. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg. He is in Washington, D.C. And he was speaking at the Wilson Center, getting very confused with the F-16 program. Will we have NATO pilots or will these pilots be Ukrainian pilots? <laughs> NATO pilots or Ukrainian pilots? Is it going to be a NATO Air Force or a Ukrainian Air Force? Stoltenberg's very confused. <laughs> we will have NATO pilots. No, I mean Ukraine pilots. We will have a NATO Air Force. No, I mean Ukraine Air Force. Damn it. I can't stop telling the truth. <laughs> can't stop telling the truth. What's wrong with me? Like Jim Carrey in Liar Liar. That was Stoltenberg yesterday at the Wilson Center. Talking about the NATO Air Force and the NATO pilots that are going to be fighting Russia. The Ukraine Air Force and the Ukraine pilots that are going to be fighting Russia. Very confused, Mr. Stoltenberg. Stoltenberg then went on to threaten China. No joke. He threatened China. He said that China should be punished. Punished is what Stoltenberg said. Because according to Stoltenberg, China is fueling the conflict in Ukraine by supplying microelectronics and other components to Russia. It's China that is fueling the conflict in Ukraine, not NATO, not the collective West. Nope. It's China that is fueling the conflict in Ukraine and they must be punished, according to Stoltenberg. He wants NATO to punish China. The reality is that China is fueling the largest armed conflict in Europe since World War II, Stoltenberg said on Monday in a speech at the Wilson Center in Washington. At the same time, it wants to maintain good relations with the West. Well, Beijing cannot have it both ways. At some point, unless China changes course, allies need to impose a cost. It's all China's fault conflict in Ukraine, fueling the conflict in Ukraine, supplying the microchips and the washing machines and the shovels. It's all China's fault and they must be punished. They can't have it both. We can't have it both ways, China. You can't have it both ways. You can't want to be friends with the collective West while at the same time fueling the conflict in Ukraine. As NATO and the collective West, they just, they just look on from the sidelines, quietly look on from the sidelines as they see this conflict unfold. Not a party to this war. They are not a party to this war at all. NATO F-16s? No, no, no. Ukraine F-16s. NATO pilots? No, no, no. no. Uh, Ukraine, Ukraine pilots. We're not a party to this war. But China, China, well... They're a party to this war, and they must be punished, according to Stoltenberg. <laughs> do these guys listen to themselves? <laughs> I mean, do they, do they listen to themselves? Do they know how ridiculous they look? Do they understand how ridiculous they look? Do they understand that the entire world knows that they're lying, can see that everything that's coming out of their mouth is, is a lie? Projection. It's all... It's all projection. It's gotten to the point where everything that the collective West says is, is projection. Everything. Anyway, Stoltenberg 
went on to meet with Professor Biden. And, uh, and I don't know what to make of this video. <laughs> I really don't know what to make of this video. At first, I thought this was, this was a deep fake. This was AI. There is no way, there is no chance that, that what we saw at the, at the White House, at the Oval Office, as Biden was meeting with Stoltenberg, that, that this was real. That, that, that's, that's, what, that's what I said as I was watching this video. There's no way this is real. This has to be AI. But more and more journalists are publishing the, the conversation between Biden and Stoltenberg. And the video that's being posted on social media is not a 10 second clip. It's, it's a five minute, like a full video, five minute conversation between Biden and Stoltenberg. And, and I don't know what to say. At the end of the conversation between, uh, between Biden and, and Stolte, Reporters start to ask questions to Biden all at once. All the reporters at once just start to start to ask all kinds of questions of Biden, right? How's your breakfast or your lunch? Good? So they all start to ask questions of, uh, of Biden all at once. And... I don't know what to say. Biden, I don't, I don't know. He has a meltdown or I, I, I don't know. Let me put the video up. If, if this is an AI or if this is a deep fake, then I 100% apologize. But I don't think it is because you have a five minute video. You have all the context there. A lot of journalists are, are publishing this. Check it out. Uh. I look very much forward to the NATO summit in Washington, D.C. next month. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. 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 So that was, that was interesting. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> Once again, if this is a deep fake or if this is AI, sorry, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Once again, this is a, this is a five minute video and I just cut it down towards the last uh, 20, 30 seconds, but it, it's a five minute complete video uh, um, clip on Twitter from, from Simon, Simon Ateba, who's, who's a very good journalist. He's, he's the real deal. So that was Biden. Mimicking, mimicking the journalists, I guess, making fun of the journalists. I, I don't know. I don't know, but you, you, you know, the White House, I, I think they're leaning into to this deep fake thing, even though it appears, it appears that these videos of Biden are not deep fakes. Some of them definitely are not deep fakes. I would probably guess that most of them, if not all of them, are not deep fakes. But it seems like the strategy of the Biden White House is now to just lean into the deep fake uh, narrative and just say that they're all deep fakes. Even though they're not deep fakes, just say that they're all deep fakes and and let people try to try to figure it out, like what I'm trying to do. I'm scratching my head saying, this can't be real. This cannot be real. Was Biden really on stage? Did he really freeze up on stage in California and Obama had to, had to pull him off stage, had to walk him off stage? Was that, was that real? <laughs> was that a deep fake? I mean, I'm, I'm looking at these videos and I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, there's no way this is real. But everyone is saying this is real. There's, there's, there's an audience that's, that was attending this event. It was real. But you watch the video and this must be a deep fake. So Corinne Jean-Pierre, she was speaking to the, to the media yesterday and, and she said the recent clips of Biden, they're, they're, they're deep fakes. 
the deep fakes. <laughs> Even though they're not deep fakes, we're going to say they're deep fakes. And you guys figure it out. <laughs> it tells you everything that we need to know about how, um, how desperate, how desperate Republicans are here. Uh, and uh, instead of talking about the president's performance in office, and what I mean by that is his legislative wins, what he's been able to do for the American people across the country, we're seeing these deep fakes, uh, these manipulated videos. Uh, and it is, again, done in bad faith. Robert Barnes uh, posted on Twitter X in reference to this video, this statement from Karine Jean-Pierre. We are at the don't believe your own eyes stage of Orwell 1984. Yeah, that's exactly right. Don't believe your own eyes. It's, it's hard to, to believe what you're seeing. So sticking with the White House, Kirby, John Kirby, he was taking questions from, uh, from reporters at the White House, and they asked Kirby about Ukraine entering NATO, and one of the reporters asked him about the, the path for Ukraine to enter NATO. Is there a plan? Is there a specific path? Uh, what's going on, given Putin's uh, statement about his, his terms for negotiating a, a ceasefire, everything that's been happening, the Swiss peace, peace summit, the Swiss peace summit. And a reporter asked Kirby, what's going on? Is, is the United States supporting Ukraine into NATO, getting into NATO? And what's the path? How's this going to work? And Kirby, he said that for Ukraine to enter NATO, it must defeat Russia. It must win the war against Russia. That is what Kirby said. U.S. President Joe Biden believes NATO is in Ukraine's future. But there are a lot of things that have to be done before it can join, Kirby said, when a journalist asked him to elaborate on the vague conditions and unclear pathway Kiev has been given. He claimed that Washington's position is absolutely clear. First, they've got to win this war, Kirby said. We're doing everything we can to make sure they can do that. Then when the war's over, no matter what it looks like, they're still going to have a long border with Russia and a legitimate security threat, he said. Washington will assist in building up Ukraine's military industrial base, although corruption is still a major concern, Kirby added. So that's the condition. Stoltenberg said that was the condition last week. Kirby is saying that this is the condition that Biden, the Biden White House, is placing on Ukraine. You want to enter NATO, you have to defeat Russia. That's the first thing you have to do. Kirby says it. The first thing, first thing that Ukraine has to do, they've got to win this war. And then Kirby talked about, talked about uh, building a military industrial complex in Ukraine, the, the Silicon Valley of weapons production. That's what they're going to turn Ukraine into. And, and Ukraine has to fight corruption. But, but all of these things are after Ukraine defeats Russia. That's how they enter NATO. An admission from, from Kirby, from the Biden White House, that, that it has always been about moving weapons into Ukraine. It always has been about getting weapons into Ukraine, and it still is about getting weapons in Ukraine. To, uh, to threaten Russia. Kirby says it. They're going to have a long border with Russia. So he said, we got to move weapons in. We got to build this big weapons uh, uh, industry in Ukraine. And we got to make sure that, that the collective West, Ukraine, NATO, they can, they can be, be positioned right there, right next to, to Russia. So that Russia doesn't threaten NATO. Not NATO threatening Russia, not NATO moving closer to Russia, it's Russia. We, we, we got to move everything closer to Russia, into Ukraine, so that Russia doesn't threaten us. But first, you have to win the war. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Russia listens to these statements from Stoltenberg last week, from Kirby yesterday. 
never going to happen. They will never allow this to happen. Never, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever, ever. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Anyway, uh, Putin is in North Korea. The last time he was in North Korea was in 2000. So this is a huge trip. He is going to be in, in North Korea for one day. From what I understand, they are going to sign all kinds of agreements, cooperation agreements in trade, in finance, outside of the USD. Of course, outside of the USD, you're talking about sanctions North Korea, sanctions Russia. So now they're going to join forces, work together to, uh, to trade things and, um, and military, military cooperation. They're going to sign a whole bunch of military deals as well. China's looking on and they're supporting this. The collective West is looking on in horror. Well, you sanctioned North Korea like crazy. You, you sanctioned Russia like crazy. You're sanctioning all kinds of countries like crazy. It's only natural that they're going to join forces and work together. And work together outside of the dollar. And work together to, to exchange weapons and weapons technologies. What did you think was going to happen? Collective West. So there's going to be a freak out from the Collective West. The axis of evil. The axis of evil is working together. Russia, North Korea, Iran, China. China's fueling the conflict in Ukraine. North Korea is fueling the conflict in Ukraine. I'm sure those stories are queued up in the Collective West media and ready to, to be published. North Korea is supplying artillery and missiles and weapons to Russia so that they can fight Ukraine. This is unacceptable. They're fueling the conflict. As NATO, as the collective at West, we're just looking on from the sidelines. Not a party to this war. Not a party to this war whatsoever. It's all China's fault. It's all North Korea's fault. Who could have ever guessed that if we sanctioned all these countries... They would decide to work together. Who could have ever guessed that? Not me. Not me. There was a Ukrainian, I believe, I believe this guy is, is an admiral, a naval, naval spokesman, sorry, a Ukrainian naval spokesman, Dmitry Plentenchuk. He said in an interview on Monday that attacking the Crimean Bridge holds little military value. It is almost not used for military logistics. Less than a quarter of the volume goes over it. The rest goes over the ferry line, he said. So you have a high-level Ukraine military official on record saying that attacking the Kerch Bridge is of zero military significance, zero military value, which means that all of the British Storm Shadow missiles and the French Scout miss missiles that the Ukraine military is launching into Crimea with the help of the UK and France and NATO. Well, no, 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 not the help of NATO because NATO is not a party to this war, excuse me. But uh, the, the missiles, the missiles that are being launched to hit the Kerch Bridge are, are aimed at destroying a civilian target, civilian infrastructure. Because here you have the naval spokesman saying this is not a military target. He's just saying it's not a military target, period. The supplies go over land. There's a, there's a railway now. They go over rail. And whatever else is, is via ferry. The bridge is not used for military purposes. So as we attack the bridge, as we continue to, to try and, and destroy the bridge, what we are doing is destroying a civilian target, civilian infrastructure. So that was an interesting statement from this naval spokesman. 
And the EU, the EU, they are putting together a corruption watchdog to oversee the 50 billion euro loan that was given to Ukraine. Now, not, we're not talking about the 50 billion euro loan that was approved the other day that the EU is guaranteeing the U.S. is going to give to Ukraine and the EU has signed up to guarantee that loan. We're not talking about that loan. We're not talking about the 1.5 billion that Ursula said she's going to be giving to, giving to Alensky at the end of this month. We're not talking about the 1.5 billion. We're not talking about the 61 billion from the U.S. We're talking about the 50 billion that the European Union approved to give to Ukraine in February that Hungary was, was stopping, that Orban was, was preventing from being approved. And they told Orban, okay, you don't have to contribute to the 50 billion. So he said, okay, whatever. And it got approved. We're talking about that 50 billion. So that 50 billion approved in February that all of us forgot about, including myself, completely forgot about that 50 billion. That money is now going to, to be audited. A watchdog is going to look after the money and make sure that there's no corruption. <laughs> right? No corruption. There's so much money swishing and swooshing <laughs> around Project Ukraine. I'm losing track. I'm losing track. $61 billion just in the last six months, from February until today, in the last four or five months, $50 billion from, from the EU. 61 billion from the US, 1.5 billion at the end of this month, and another 50 billion approved. I'm losing track of all the money. And I do this for a living. <laughs> Unbelievable. And, and how is this 50 billion going to be paid back? Take a guess. It's going to be paid back from the. Uh, from the profits, from the Russian frozen assets, everything. All of the money now that is being given to Ukraine, you're getting the same, uh, the same reasoning from the collective West, the same excuse from the collective West as to how this money is going to be paid back. 33 billion of this 50 billion is, uh, is, is going to be a bond, and then the other 17 billion is going to, is going to be just given to, to Ukraine straight from uh, EU taxpayer, something like that. And, and all of this is going to to be paid back via the, the profits from the 200 billion frozen at Euroclear in Brussels. All the money that is being given to Ukraine, all the money, the, the same excuse is now being given. It'll be paid back from the profits from the 200 billion from Euroclear. All the 61 billion, we'll pay it back from the profits from the 200 billion at Euroclear. The 50 billion that was approved yesterday, we'll pay it back from the profits at Euroclear, the 50 billion in February, we'll pay it back from the profits at Euroclear. <laughs> are those profits that are going to pay back all of these bonds and all these loans? The profits from Euroclear are going to pay it all back. The 1.5 billion that is generated a year, that's going to pay back the, the, hundred, the 160, 50 billion, 50 billion, 61, 162.5 billion that has been approved in the last four or five months. All of that money is going to be paid back through the profits at Euroclear, which generate 1.5 billion a year. <laughs> it's going to take 100 years to pay back this money from those frozen assets, right? 162.5. Let me do some Annalena Baerbach math. One second. 50 billion in February. 50 billion uh, the other day, two days ago. 50 plus 50. Carry the 360 degrees. That's 100 billion. 60, is it, was it 61 billion or 68 billion? It was 61 billion that Congress approved, right? 100 plus 61 billion divided by 360 degrees plus 720i is 161 billion plus 1.5 billion that's going to be given to Ukraine at the end of the month, according to Ursula. That's 161 billion plus 1.5 billion is 162.5 billion carry the 360 degree divided by 720 high 162.5 billion do i have my math right that's from february up until today <laughs> oh my god <laughs> do i have that right i think i have that right yeah. yep 
In February, EU members agreed to provide Kiev with 50 billion euros, 54 billion dollars, in funding from 2024 to 2027 as part of a mechanism known as the Ukraine Facility. The money will help finance Ukraine's modernization and reconstruction, as well as deliver uninterrupted public services to the population and, and implement numerous reforms <laughs> required to join the EU. Yeah, this money's, this money's going to get lost. <laughs> this, money, th th this watch group, this audit group, you know what they're doing? You know why, why the EU has, has decided to, to appoint this, this watchdog group for the 50 billion? They want to make sure that, that most of this money is is not siphoned off by by Alensky and and his crew. <laughs> that's that's what they're there for. They want to make sure that this money is is utilized by by the by the collective west, the collective west mafia, <laughs> right? That's why they're there. Yeah. Of this sum, 33 billion will be sourced by issuing bonds, while 17 billion could come in non-repayable support potentially generated by proceeds from the Russian frozen assets by the EU after the start of the conflict. Moscow has repeatedly denounced the asset freeze as theft. Yeah. What a freaking mess. Never going to end. The money to Ukraine is never going to end. Ever. So the Financial Times, they are reporting that. How am I doing on time? I'm doing all right. They are reporting that weapons manufacturers are in a hiring spree. They are hiring like crazy, according to the Financial Times. I think I have the article here. Global defense groups hiring at the fastest rate in decades amid record orders. According to the Financial Times, the largest contractors, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and General Dynamics have nearly 6,000 job openings, while 10 companies surveyed are seeking to increase staff numbers by almost 37,000 in total, or nearly 10% of their aggregate workforce, the newspaper reported. It also talked about uh, UK, German, Rheinmetall, Leonardo in Italy, which is a defense uh, company. All of these defense companies are hiring like crazy to meet the demand of Project Ukraine. Yesterday, I was talking about the black market weapons dealers, how they're making bank. Now you have all of these MIC companies, they're making bank. Project Ukraine, everybody. Project Ukraine. But it's China. It's China that's fueling this, this conflict. <laughs> We're not a party to this war. NATO pilots, no Ukrainian pilots. NATO Air Force, no Ukrainian Air Force. Which one is it, Stoltenberg? So the BBC, they, uh, they put out an article and, and a video report from Odessa. And the BBC, in this article and in this video report, it's quite amazing that the BBC is reporting on this. It's, it's left me speechless. They talk about how Ukraine is, is running out of, out of soldiers. This is a huge problem. They're running out of soldiers and, and the men in Odessa, they're hiding out. And the BBC does this report uh, talking about how men are hiding in their apartments, how this one guy doesn't go out unless he's with his daughter, because from what I understand, the, the military guys, what are they called, the TCC guys? that grab them from the streets and put them in vans. If you're with children, they don't grab you. So he only goes out with his daughter and they have apps. They have apps and telegram groups where people that go out, they take photos and they track where all of these guys are that are uh, forcing people into vans. So everyone knows where they are any given time of day. So they know what streets they can, they can walk around and which, uh, which areas and which streets to avoid. And the BBC, they attended a wedding in Odessa. And they said that the, the wedding was empty. Few guests uh, showed up. Here's what the BBC said in their report. Dark storm clouds threatened to upend Sergei and Tanya's beach wedding. But as the couple walked down the long wide staircase to greet their guests, the empty chairs signaled there was a bigger problem 
In total, half of their guests were missing. Their family and friends sent their apologies, but explained that the risk of attending had been too great. What if they had been caught by one of the conscription squads, which now roam Ukraine, Ukraine's streets? The conscription squads. So that's the BBC reporting on this. Why are they reporting on this? Don't know. Don't know. But they're reporting on it. So the Daily Mail, the Daily Mail, they put out an article talking about replacing Biden. Secret Democrat plot to replace Biden revealed how Clinton, Obama, Pelosi, and Schumer would topple the aging president and when they'd do it. So in this article from the Daily Mail, they basically talk to, to analysts and election campaign experts, party insiders, and they're just basically, they're getting, they're getting theories. They don't really have facts. They're just getting theories from various people in and around the the 2024 election. And the theory, one of the theories, or many of the theories, are that, uh, that the debate, which is scheduled for the 27th of June, this is Biden's make or break. If Biden does well, then he's, he's a go for the entire campaign up until November. But if he bombs, if things go really bad, well, They'll use the time that they have until the convention to try and convince Biden to, to step down, to step aside. And it's going to be Obama, Pelosi, Schumer, Hillary. They're going to be the driving force to, to convince Biden to step aside and to look for a younger, more dynamic, more exciting uh, person to replace Biden. And that's why, according to the Daily Mail, that is why the... The convention is after the debate. Usually debates happen after both parties have their convention. That's, that's, that's almost always the case. That's the rule. You have your convention and then you have your debates. But they, wanna, they, they wanted to position the debate before the convention because they wanted to see if Biden was going to make it so they can take a decision before the convention. So everything is on the line for Biden for this uh, debate. If he can make it through the debate, it's going to be Biden all the way up until November. If he doesn't make it through the debate, some of the theories are that uh, the, the, big, the big four, Obama, Clinton, Pelosi, Schumer, they're going to put pressure on Biden, on the Biden team, the Biden family to to remove him and put someone else. And one of the, one of the analysts that the Daily Mail interviewed said that uh, they're gonna use a convention to create excitement around this new person. If Biden bombs during the debate, they're gonna use the convention to build up a lot of excitement, like Obama. Like when Obama gave his famous speech, I think it was at the, at the convention, which launched his presidency for 2000, when was it, 2000? I don't remember, 2008 or whatever, uh, when, when Obama gave that famous speech and then four years later he was, he was running for president, but it was that speech. So they're going to use the convention to, to introduce the new, young, dynamic person that's going to be replacing Biden. That's one of the theories. So that's the Daily Mail article. It's, it's actually a very interesting read, even though I have to stress Daily Mail presents it as if it's like a real plan and they have this insider information. But when you read the article, you understand that these are just theories that people are kicking around. We'll see. I, I, I can believe it. I can believe that, that there's, a, there's some thinking in the, in the DNC among the, the Democrats and the globalists that, that the debate will decide Biden's fate. And that's why the debate is, is so early in the campaign process. Anyway, that's the Daily Mail. And, uh, 
and build since we're on elections build they put out an article with the title translated from german Baerbach is interested in another another candidate for chancellor another another go at chancellor this is translated from google translate but um build is reporting that that annalena 360 wants to wants to become chancellor she wants to replace pirate schultz <laughs> annalena 360 delusional delusional and there was actually a build reporter that even told her that after this article came out another article popped up on build with the title you are making a fool of yourselves dear greens and it's not only annalena that wants to become chancellor it's also habeck her partner her partner in crime at the green party annalena wants to become chancellor robert habeck wants to become chancellor and uh, this journalist is at build is saying you crazy <laughs> you are crazy during the eu elections you guys got demolished you guys got destroyed 11 percent was it 10 or 11 percent from 20 percent to like 10 percent people despise you guys and now you want to become chancellor of germany annalena or habeck crazy 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 so let's do a couple of clown worlds and we'll wrap this video up. Schumer put up a photo for Father's Day barbecuing. <laughs> Let me put up the photo. It's, it's since been taken down. This was posted on, I believe, on Twitter X. And it has since been deleted. Schumer deletes Father's Day photo tweet in front of the grill after critics slam his spatula skills <laughs> there you can see chuck schumer holding a raw a raw burger <laughs> an uncooked burger and another burger uncooked but he decided to put cheese on that burger <laughs> would you like some cheese on this raw hamburger <laughs> some cheese on this raw burger mm, yummy <laughs> everyone was making fun of schumer he has deleted the post. His team. His team deleted the post. <laughs> His social media team. Even cooking burgers. <laughs> even cooking burgers is a lie. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, are, are you guys watching the, the Euro? Are you watching the matches? UEFA is very upset because the Serbian fans and, and yesterday the Romanian fans, they keep on uh, busting out Russian flags. <laughs> they keep on showing Russian flags. Actually yesterday, I believe that the Romanian fans, they hung um, a, a DPR flag, I believe, a Donetsk, Donetsk uh, People's Republic flag. And UEFA is now saying no Russian flags. No Russian flags, no DPR flags, no Moscow flags, no Russian flags. Yeah, they're very upset. But the Serbian fans and yesterday the Romanian fans, they were breaking out the, the Russian flags. So that's going on. And do I have time for, for one more? Let me do one more. Let me do one more here. Do I have one more? I actually have two more. I'll save one for tomorrow, I guess. So Canada, they sent a warship to uh, Havana. That's right, in response to Russia. Canadian ship sent to Havana to demonstrate our naval capability, according to Defense Minister Blair, HMCS Margaret Brooke, was in Havana and docked alongside a Russian Navy missile submarine. The ship docked beside a Russian Navy missile submarine that was in Cuba at the same time and was among a fleet of Russian vessels sailing near North America in recent weeks. Blair said the Russian vessels do not appear to be a threat, but he said Canada had dispatched other ships to patrol alongside American ships and keep a close eye on the Russian fleet. Quote, Canada is committed to maintaining a credible military 
presence in the sea and in the air around our continent and any foreign actors coming into our neighborhood can expect to see our armed forces fulfilling their mission to protect Canada's interest, according to the defense minister. Let me, let me turn this phrase around a bit because he says Canada is committed to maintaining a credible military presence. Let me, let me turn this around a little bit. Russia is committed to maintaining a credible military presence in the sea and in the air around our continent and any foreign actors coming into our neighborhood can expect to see our armed forces fulfilling their mission to protect Russia's interest. Fair? Is that fair? That's the video, theduran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X, and go to the Duran shop. Pick up some football merch, football24 is the code. Link is in the description box down below. Take care.